Hello anatomy colleagues, this is Dr. Alsop, and in this <clears throat> learning objective video we will be discussing the vulva, or the external genitalia typically associated with an individual assigned female at birth. So there are seven structures that we will be discussing here, so we will focus on mainly describing location and composition of these structures. So let's start with the mons pubis. Um, and we don't have a particularly great uh, image of this right here, but this is going to be the mound of skin, as well as, very importantly, the subcutaneous tissue, which varies in terms of the amount of adipose um, due to various factors, but in particular age. This is going to be located superficial to the pubic symphysis, so it's going to be more anteriorly placed. So it's going to be in this general region here, so you can't see it very well on this illustration. But... Uh, keep in mind that it's going to be that superficial to the pubic synthesis. In close proximity to the mons pubis and extending posteriorly towards the perineum um, it are going to be two prominent, more longitudinally oriented folds of skin. Um, these are going to form the lateral boundaries of the vulva. And so these, in this particular image, they are being pull, uh, moved laterally. Um, they're going to be more kind of in this position here for the labia majora. You can see it being labeled right here. Um, so again, this is going to connect that mons pubis posteriorly with the perineum. If you recall back from session nine, the round ligament of the uterus may end in the adipose tissue of the anterior portions of the labia magus. All right, the labia minora are going to be two small, uh, smaller cutaneous folds that are going to lie medial as well as parallel to the labia majora. So these are also being kind of extended laterally in this image here to show some of the more medial structures. The minora are going to extend posterior from the clitoris um, and it's going to encircle and form the lateral boundaries of the vestibule or the vestibule of the vagina. So anteriorly, each labia minus are going to bifurcate into two parts or two structures. The superior portion is going to pass anterior and superficial to the clitoris and as is referred to as the prepice or the hood of the clitoris. So you can see a bit of it here. It does look a little bit more skin-like um, as it is going to be part of this labia minora. And the posterior portion is referred to as the frenulum of the clitoris. And you can't see it uh, as well here. As mentioned, it's going to be more posteriorly placed. The vestibule of the vagina, uh, more commonly just referred to as the vestibule, is the cavity between the labia minora. And the vestibule will contain the external urethral meatus. So you can see that here as well as the vaginal opening or orifice. And you can't see it as well in this image, but also you're going to have the meatuses or openings of the greater vestibular glands or the Bartholin's glands. So you can see those here on this image. The clitoris is an erectile structure, meaning it is composed of erectile tissues. And like all erectile tissues, the clitoris is ri richly vascularized as well as richly innervated. And this is a sexual organ that will respond to sexual arousal and stimulation with increased blood flow into the sinuses within the erectile tissues. And that also will um, lead to compression of the venous outflow channels. There are three major parts of the clitoris. There are the crura, which are composed of the corpora cavernosa. So you can see that here and here. That is, um, that's going to be attaching to the ischiopubic rami on either side. And the crura are covered superficially by the ischiocavernosus muscles. The body of, or the shaft is going to be com composed of those paired corpora cavernosa. You can kind of see them extending into this region. Oops, sorry. Extending up here, you can see it in this general region as well. Um, that is going to be the, the paired corpora cavernosa. They're going to be separated uh, by an incomplete fibrous septum. And then lastly, you have the glans clitoris. 
you can see that here you can see it we don't have it labeled here but it's going to be located right here um, this is sometimes referred to as the clitoris um, which is uh, not a complete indication of the entirety of the clitoris but it's often referred to that because it's observable um, this is going to be composed of corpus spongiosum erectile tissue some tissues will just call it this spongy tissue and the glans clitoris is going to be highly innervated all right, the vestibular bulbs are composed of erectile tissues as well. And specifically, they are going to be composed of corpus spongiosum, and these are going to lie on either side of the vestibule. So sometimes you'll hear these, the bulbs of the vestibule, vestibular bulbs. And they're going to also attach to the perineal membrane, which you can see well here on this image. We'll talk more about this in the upcoming session. The anterior ends of the bulbs will taper some, and they're going to be attached to the clitoris by two very slender bands of erectile tissue. The vestibular bulbs are going to be covered by bulbospongiosis muscle, and when these erectile tissues become engorged with blood, this will change, uh, cause changes to the vestibule, as the vestibular bulbs are flanking the vestibule, and it will also exert pressure on the neighboring clitoris. Lastly, let's discuss the greater vestibular glands, sometimes referred to as Bartholin's glands. These are going to be located, I'm going to circle them right here, they're going to be located uh, near the posterior margin of each vestibular bulb and near the vaginal orifice. And each of the ducts of the gland will empty into the vestibule. And the secretions which occur during sexual arousal are clear to whitish mucus type secretion. And if a duct or the opening of the duct becomes blocked, this may result in a Bartholin cyst. All right, excellent, we have reached the summary slide. Please make sure to review and reach out to me or any of my anatomy colleagues with any questions. Thank you for your time and attention.